Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to go through an A-level chemistry exam question involving a titration. Details are in the description. The question involves calculating an average titer from experimental data as well as moles calculations and a percentage uncertainty. In the final part of the question we'll look at ways to change the procedure in order to reduce the percentage uncertainty. Here's the question. A student was asked to design an experiment to determine a value for the MR of MHCO3. The student dissolved 1464 milligrams of MHCO3 in water and made the solution up to 250 centimeters cubed. 25 centimeter cubed samples of the solution were titrated with 0.102 mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid. The balanced equation is given as well as the results table. For the first part of the question, we have to calculate the mean titer and use this to determine the amount in moles of HCl that reacted with 25 centimeters cubed of the MHCO3 solution. When calculating the mean titer, you never include the rough titer, sometimes called a trial. We only include concordance accurate titers. Concordant titers are within 0.1 centimeters cubed. It is good practice to put a tick next to the concordant titers that you will use to calculate the average. The average, or mean titer, works out to be 9.70 centimeters cubed. Next, we have to determine the amount in moles of HCl that reacted with 25 centimeters cubed of the MHCO3 solution. A diagram can really help to visualize where the different substances are and how to work through the calculation. The hydrochloric acid was delivered to the conical flask using a burette. The burette is highlighted in the diagram. Amount is equal to concentration multiplied by volume. Convert centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed to be consistent with units. The amount of HCl works out to be 9.894 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. Here's the next part of the question. Calculate the amount in moles of MHCO3 in 250 centimeters cubed of the solution. Then calculate the experimental value for the MR of MHCO3. Give your answer to the appropriate number of significant figures. We can see from the balanced equation that this is a one-to-one -one reaction. At the end point of the reaction, the amount of HCl added to the conical flask is equal to the amount of MHCO3 that was in the conical flask at the beginning of the titration. Portions of the MHCO3 solution were transferred to a conical flask for each titration using a pipette. 25 centimeters cubed of the solution was used each time. So 9.894 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of MHCO3 is present in 25 centimeters cubed of the solution. There is 250 centimeters cubed of MHCO3 in the original solution. This solution was probably made up in a piece of glassware called a volumetric flask, highlighted in the diagram. The amount of MHCO3 in the 250 centimeter cubed volumetric flask is 10 times the amount of MHCO3 present in 25 centimeters cubed. This works out to be 9.894 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Amount in moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass. This equation can be rearranged to find the molar mass MR. The mass of MHCO3 is given in milligrams. Convert this to grams by dividing by 1000. The molar mass works out to be 148 grams per mole, given to three significant figures. This is consistent with the data in the question. Here's the final part of the question. The students identified the use of the burette as the largest source of uncertainty in the experiments. Using the same apparatus, suggest how the procedure could be improved to reduce the percentage uncertainty in using the burette. Justify your suggested improvements. Percentage uncertainty is equal to the total uncertainty of the measurements divided by the measurements multiplied by 100. We have to use the same apparatus so the uncertainty of the measurements will not change. Instead, the measurements has to change. We could either decrease the concentration of the HCl or increase the mass of the MHCO3. Both of these changes would result in a larger titer. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. 
Post in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions. Take care and good luck with your studies.